New developments tonight in the case of a woman missing from Idlewild and her estate. Why people living in one Del Mar neighborhood say broken street lights will make Halloween spookier this year and they're not happy about it. It's yet another reason why we really needed the Padres to beat the Phillies. History shows our economy may now be heading into the tank. Using electric vehicle batteries to power buildings like the one behind me could be coming sooner than you think thanks to a San Diego based company that's on this week's Earth 8 report. And if you're a devastated Padre fan who needs some cheering up, we have some Friar felines who want to hit a home run for your family. And we're remembering actor and comedian Leslie Jordan tonight. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A settlement agreement in the court battle over the estate of missing woman Dia Abrams is set to be heard next week. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. And I'm Jesse Pagan. The agreement calls for the estate to sell her ranch near Idlewild. Tonight, CBS 8's David Gofferson reports Abrams' boyfriend, Keith Harper, could collect half of the estate if the settlement is approved. Dia Abrams' 117-acre ranch near Idlewild along with two other properties in the area, may soon be sold if a Palm Springs probate judge approves this settlement agreement next week. The money from the sale of Abrams' estate would fund a $300,000 reward for information leading to the discovery of the missing woman's body and a conviction in the case. That is the main reason why Abrams' son says he is in favor of the settlement. I support the proposed settlement agreement because it will establish a $300,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of those responsible for Dia's disappearance, and I'm really hopeful that it will lead to a break in the case. If the former La Jolla resident's body is not found in the next three years, the agreement calls for 50% of her liquidated estate to go to her adult children, Chrisara and Clinton Abrams. The other 50% would go to her boyfriend, Keith Harper. Harper has been living on Abrams Bonita Vista Ranch in Mountain Center for more than two years, ever since Abrams mysteriously went missing in June of 2020, two weeks after she signed a trust agreement naming Harper as the beneficiary of her estate. Abrams' adult children filed a petition in court seeking his removal as trustee of the estate, claiming Harper was a suspect in Abrams homicide. Harper recently launched this new website advertising the ranch as a wedding venue and he is planning construction on the site according to court documents. Harper is planning to make permanent changes to the real property by pouring cement for an RV park and he has continued to unilaterally and brazenly use the ranch for his own benefit, the court records claim. All parties approved a settlement term sheet in August, but Harper's attorney died unexpectedly in September, and the final settlement agreement was never signed. Now, uh, Keith Harper did not respond to a message seeking comment for this report. If that agreement is approved, a, uh, a independent trustee would be put in place to immediately start selling assets off of Dia Abrams' estate. David, we know Dia Abrams used to live in La Jolla and she has not been declared deceased. So what happens if she's suddenly found alive? Well, first of all, we want to reiterate the settlement agreement has not been approved by a judge, but if it is approved, her estate would be sold off. And then at some point in the future, if she were to turn up alive, she would be entitled to all the proceeds from the sale of her estate. All right, could get uh, complicated. Uh, we do hope for her, her safe return, but thanks for the update on that agreement, David. Padres fans with dreams of the World Series did not get the season finale they were hoping for. That final game of the NLCS was a roller coaster ride featuring a lot of late game lead changes and a trio of clutch home runs. CBS 8's John Howard is here with what folks are saying about the game and what happens now, John. Thanks, Jesse. You know, sad to see the season come to an end, obviously. And what makes it more difficult to handle than other years is how far the Padres went in the postseason. The further a team goes in the playoffs, the more intense the sense of loss is when the run finally ends. Uh, compared to last year, the team didn't even make the playoffs, so when the season ended, most of the city hardly noticed. 
But this year, expectations rose after the big trades in August. Excitement increased after a wild card playoff spot was clinched. The city was on the bandwagon for the big series win in New York, and the bandwagon was overflowing for the slang of the Dragon of the North defeating the hated Dodgers. The players experienced the same thing as the fans. Catcher Austin Nola, who hit a fly ball for the final out of the series yesterday, put things in perspective by simply saying he wants to keep playing. I don't think frustration is the word. It's disappointing. It's, it hurts. Um, I can't even put into words how hard it feels. I mean, the feeling of not getting to play anymore because you want to keep playing. This is fun. I mean, this is addicting. I mean, that, those San Diego fans make you want to play there. Like, do we even need it all? I don't even want an offseason. I just want to keep playing. <laughs> That's why it hurts because it's like, we want to keep playing. Like, we don't, we don't want to stop. Like, we, we can play every day in front of those people. So now we watch the World Series wondering what if that was the Padres instead of the Phillies. But unfortunately, life goes on. The offseason will come along. They'll make some changes to the roster. And come spring training, hope springs eternal when everyone wants to be a World Series champion again. A lot of what ifs. What ifs mm -hmm. will kill you, though, so we got to move on. That's right. Thanks, John. Now, despite the season's tough ending, Padres fans did wait outside Petco Park with open arms for the team's return. One young fan by the name of Ingrid walked away with a special surprise from Joe Musgrove himself. I have one of Joe Musgrove's cleats. He was coming down, giving everyone high fives, and then he came over to me and he's like, do you think you'd be able to fit in these one day? And I'm like, yeah, maybe. I was so grateful for it. This is one of the best my, nights of my life. Oh my word. Aww. That's so sweet. Other fans told us they enjoyed this season and they're excited for next year. And I think Ingrid is probably a little more excited than they are now. <laughs> Absolutely. It's got to be so good. Uh, mm. Loyal fans still welcoming them home. Now by beating the Padres, those Phillies, they advance to the World Series. Well, they will play the Houston Astros. So who are you going to root for? As CBS 8 Steve Price reports, before you decide, you may want to consider a little history. As if it's not bad enough that the Phillies beat the Padres, shattering our World Series dreams. Now, history shows us we may be about to lose big again. You see, the last four times that a team from Philadelphia has won the World Series, our economy has gone into the tank. A social media editor for The Morning Brew made the disturbing discovery. So it happened in 1929 and 1930 with the Philadelphia Athletics. And then in 1980 and 2008 with the Phillies, and we'll find out this year. Listen to that last part again. And we'll find out this year. Yeah, Morning Brew managing editor Neil Fryman is a Phillies fan who's apparently already planning a World Series victory parade. And he says don't blame the Phillies if they win it all and the economy tanks. It's actually the Padres' fault. Maybe they could have had a little better uh, clutch hitting like the Phillies, but, you know, that's another consideration. Ouch. Come on, man. I'm a big Phillies fan. I should have said, I'm a huge Phillies fan. Okay, fair enough, but here are the facts. 1929, Phillies win, and days later, Wall Street crashes. They repeat in 1930 and were in the Great Depression. They win it again in 1980, and we enter into a recession that lasts three years. And finally, 2008, the Great Recession, when the housing bubble burst. Go Padres. <laughs> Certified financial planner Harrison Johnson, a Padres fan, says don't sell everything you own just yet. Number one, the Astros are heavily favored to beat the Phillies. And number two, in finance, past results are not always indicative of future results or correlation, not causation. So, you know, there is some um, history there, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we could have a real problem going into a recession. But if we do go into a recession, of course, it's the Phillies fault. And I think it's really conflicting for a lot of Phillies fans like myself, because, you know, you want to see your team win for the first time in over a decade. Then again, you also like, you know, a steady paycheck and don't want to see the economy uh, tumble into a recession. Unfortunately, we don't have any history on what happens to the economy after the Padres win the World Series. Hopefully, we'll find that out next year. At Petco Park, Steve Price, CBSA.
All right, good to know there. Yes, let's hope <laughs> for uh, no repeat there of at least the economy going south. We'll see what happens, fingers crossed. All right, tonight an oil spill in Salina Cruz, Mexico is threatening wildlife along the Oaxaca coast. Three days ago, oil spilled from the refinery in Salina Cruz. Surfers and fishermen were the first to notice the signs. Thousands of sea turtles mm, used the coast to lay their eggs. Birds have also been washing up miles away with oil in their feathers. Wild Coast, a nonprofit organization, is in Salina Cruz right now to assess the damage. They're also asking people to document anything they might see. This is one of those things where you can make a difference. So again, if you're in San Diego and you have friends down in Oaxaca or you're in Oaxaca and, or you're, you know someone who's down there, please let them know to start documenting this and tagging on social media, Oaxaca oil spill. There was another oil spill in that same area 10 years ago in 2012 which killed more than 50 sea turtles.